Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. And welcome, welcome. My name is Alex Cooper. And if you haven't been in one of my previous classes, I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library, uh, the Evans Library location, the Harlem Library, and also the new, da -da 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 -da, newly built Grovetown Library. Yay! <laughs> Right now we're on the Harlem Library Facebook post, but of course you can watch all our videos on our GCHRL videos uh, page on YouTube. So welcome, welcome. Uh, feel free to post a hello in the greeting, I mean, excuse me, in the chat. The big thing about YouTube is you do need to be logged in to be able to make um, uh, comments or anything like that or ask questions and also to do likes and uh, do subscribe button as well. So. Very glad that you're here with me today. I'll kind of cover some of the other classes we'll, we have uh, available, and we're actually doing a fun one this afternoon, too, okay? And other classes we're going to be doing for the rest of the month, okay? So, here we go. So, as I always say, please feel free to post questions in the chat. Um, the biggest question I ask is, how can I help, okay? What questions do you have? How can I help? Today, we're doing a scratch to Python. Uh, taking our some of our skills that we know from scratch and seeing how they translate into Python and a website we're going to be using today is EduBlocks, uh, which is similar to towards Python into something similar like scratch with some uh, building blocks instead of doing just hands-on coding but it'll kind of lean us in that direction too okay so that's what we're going to be covering this this morning is the Python blocks coding and also we'll get doing a whole bunch of different projects and this afternoon at 2 30 we're actually going to be doing birding yay <laughs> we didn't do any birding last month uh, so burner birding is an introduction to uh, birding photography and uh, also knowing about backyard birding of course I'll have pictures and all kinds of stuff now usually what happens with this class is half of its inside so we learned about bird watching, identifying birds is mostly what people want to do. We talk about the Audubon app that's free, and then we go outside and find birds. But since we're still all, of course, home staying safe, we don't have any classes at the library. Um, so the uh, uh, the things we're going to do like a virtual uh, kind of go out and see stuff. Okay. All right. So uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing two classes. We're going to do it library resources and apps in the morning at 11 o'clock and then library resources and apps at 2 30. so if you're interested in, in free ebooks learn about acorn tv uh, uh the independent film uh app that has independent films on there too and among other stuff and i've listed there uh, all kinds of different library resources ebooks audiobooks legal forms we'll talk about galileo we'll also talk about the library app uh, one of the big things about the library app is it'll actually tell you if there's any when the due date is and you can extend it very easily by using the app okay so here's and I'll disappear for a minute here's a class here's a list of our classes uh, for the whole month of August can you believe it's August already wow uh, I, I know uh, some stores are starting to put out Halloween stuff so there you go right there Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library for questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel. Click like on our video. And to find our YouTube channel, you should be on it right now, but to find our YouTube channel separately, just do search gchrl videos and it's very easy to find okay so today is Wednesday yay today's Wednesday all right so welcome welcome as you come in the classroom kind of say hello into the chat okay so this is a fun class uh, this has a, a little bit about uh, the big thing is that we have uh, previous months class have been scratch uh, and an introduction to scratch animation scratch and then we had a make a game with scratch class as well those videos should still be uh, those video those videos are still up and available on YouTube and any previous classes we have are also up 
and still available on the Facebook Live of each uh, library's page. Okay, so today, and I'm actually going to go ahead and post. Uh, we did the class yesterday for the first time, so this will be technically the second time doing this class. So I actually have updated the handout. So let me do that real quick, and I'll actually post that into our chat. Let me see, any questions uh, to begin with? So here's our handout here, and I'll actually pull it up on the other screen. <laughs> All right, so basically what we would do in class, and it kind of operates this way. Anytime I have anything that's like a hands-on, I kind of recommend to basically have me, you know, on a smaller device, and basically what that how that will help that way is that you can hear me talk you can see stuff on there and of course then you have the main computer in front of you so it kind of makes it a little bit easier to follow along too so basically just kind of imagine that we're in class I have this handout and then we actually have our computers in front of us to go along so if you do want to print this out or just have this on a separate device um, there you go too alright so we're doing scratch to Python uh, blocks to coding Okay, so we're not gonna, we don't actually gonna go into a ton of, uh, I guess, logistics about Python. We're gonna touch base on some things. Mainly, the idea of this is that is there projects that I can do in Scratch that I can also do in um, working with Python? Yes, and I'll have some challenge, uh, some challenge code for you to do kind of in both. So, like, here's a Python code, can you make it in Scratch? Um, one big thing about Python, well, we'll talk about that in a second. So let's just keep going here. So here's our big overview. Okay, overview. We're going to talk about what is Scratch or what we're going to cover this morning. We'll talk about sign up or log in. Now, both the websites we're going to go to uh, Scratch and also the Edu Blocks website. You can actually log in, set up an account, which is completely free. Um, the reason I'd recommend you do that. You don't have to do that today. None of the things I'm going to do today is going to require you to log in or sign up, uh, set up anything. The only reason that you'd want to do that is so that you can save your code for later. Okay, that's really it. Okay, so we'll talk about signing up, logging in. We'll talk about starting Scratch. We'll talk about saving our projects, giving them a name, program overview, and then we'll talk about edublocks.org, which is a Python block coder, which is this right here. Okay. We'll talk about sign up, log in, and again, it's free. The only reason you'd want to sign up is because then you can save your stuff, but you don't have to do that today at all, okay? Uh, there's no required login or anything like that. Uh, we'll start EDU Blocks. We'll talk about saving our projects, and we'll start on our first project, Hello World. Other one, Row Row Your Boat is what we're going to do. We're going to do a dog gears calculator, a random number generator, and then we'll finish off by a really big project doing a rock, paper, scissors game. Okay, so I'm glad you're here. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> so any questions before we get started? Look, there's Mr. Cat over there on my shoulder. Who's that over there? It's Mr. Cat. That's Scratch, actually. <gasps> All right, so let's talk about Scratch a little bit. And when we start to get delve into it, I'll kind of disappear with our coding. What is Scratch and what can I do with it, okay? Scratch is a programming language. It's online community, which is fantastic online community. They are very innovative, come up with lots of good ideas with their code. Uh, makes it very easy to share code uh, from around the world, view code, edit stuff. Um, remix is what they call on there. You can repost code that you've edited, okay? So let's talk about how much does Scratch cost. Scratch is completely free. Uh, do I need a license? No, you don't. Scratch has always been free. It's actually hosted by MIT. 
And one of the cool things about Scratch is can I sell my projects? Actually, yes, you can because it's an open source. Uh, Python's the same way. Now, there's a really cute, cute little video here to play all the little fun animations that you can do with Scratch and everything. I usually show that in the animations class and let's make a game on Scratch class. Uh, but if you want to view that separately, go right ahead. It's a lot of fun. Mostly we're going to focus on the programming part. So let's go ahead. Let's go to scratch.mit.edu. <laughs> All right, so here's our main page of Scratch, okay? They've got all kinds of different projects that are going on down here that are being featured. Snakes and ladders. And we wanna make, I've already, um, excuse me, it's already automatically logged me in. So I'm gonna go up here and let's click where it says create. Now up here we can actually save our project, we can give it a name. If you're logged in, uh, save your project, give it a name, and hit file and save. If you do decide to set up an account, it's only just username, um, email address, and password, and then it actually keeps you up there, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead, it'll keep you up there, it'll keep your data, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Alright, so we have our create. We have our save project. We have give it a name. Okay. We click file and of course save now. So let's talk about our program overview a little bit. So ha who has used Scratch before is a really big question. Okay. So if you've never actually used Scratch before, do you realize we're going to be covering both a little bit? Okay. So not only will our code be, we'll talk about how to use our blocks in Scratch, but we're also going to be talking about how to use our blocks with our um, EDU builder, edu builder uh, for Python code too. So our big thing here is number one here on the right side is our stage. That's where our animations are. That's where our characters are. Python. I'll say out of the box doesn't do anything like that. It's all text based. Okay. So even when someone says like a text based game, uh, or excuse me, says a game with just basic Python, not any kind of add ons like uh, Pi games or anything like that, it just means it's going to be the basic text just to kind of let you know. Okay. So uh, the big thing with that is just cats just going to talk when we do our code this morning. Number two is our backdrop. There's your backdrop picture if you wanted to add one. Our sprites, our sprites go here. And the only sprite we're gonna be using today is Mr. Scratch Cat. And our work area, okay? The big thing about our work area is here's where all our code goes. So we have our blocks over here on the right side, our blocks. We drag those blocks over here. The great part about this is uh, we know our code will be exact. We know our code will work because our blocks go together. Okay, so there's not really any mistakes about uh, You put a space in the wrong place or something wasn't capitalized which can happen in Python Okay, uh, the big thing about this is we talk about the pieces going together The other thing is there's all these different pieces that go together similar to Lego blocks, we have our text boxes. You can click to put text in. We also have things like the forever re loop or repeat, and we're actually going to be using that for both uh, Scratch and Python this morning. All right, so exactly what is Python? Okay, and what can I do with it? Well, Python, if you want to download the straight up version, I guess you'd say. You go to python.org to download that, and I'm actually going to pull that up. Mm 
Mhm. So basically you click downloads, you tell which which platform you're working, pretty much click here and it'll auto install itself. Okay. They have great documentation on here about getting started and I have all these uh, a bunch of resources here at the end of the class and I'll keep referencing them as well okay learning frequently asked questions about all that kind of good stuff now the main one is this this is the shell Whoop. main one is this is the, the Python shell which is here you can type some code into this and just a little side note here you basically click file new and it opens up another window this is kind of like a word editor I don't know why that minimized but it did for some reason you click file new on the shell and here where it says untitled this is where you type your code in you click run it'll make you save it if you are doing a new code and then it, it runs it over here okay so you put your code here you save it this is kinda like a text editor like word or something save the file name hit run and it'll load it over there okay alright now and I'll, I'll kinda show that as well so with Python is very popular uh, there's some folks that I've recently heard that basically talk about Python has its limits of what all you can do with Python uh, you know it's not C or C++ or anything or you know some of the other I won't go into that but some of the other coding languages but a lot of folks still uh, really really believe that it's a firm way to get started okay so it's an easy programming language to learn uh, to understand and like I said again it's a great place to start uh, with our coding and then we can delve a little bit deeper later on if you did want to get into other languages or work on different projects okay what we're going to be using today is edublocks so let's go to edublocks.org uh, with edublocks you don't have to install anything on your computer it's mainly what I'm going to be using today okay there we are so as it loads there it is right there there's Python a uh, big thing it's install free it's all on the website uh, it's text specs block on uh, text <laughs> text on the blocks okay it's block based coding um, it does do the turtle game and stuff which we're not going to be doing today but some other features as well okay so we've gone to edublocks.org is where I want you to go and then let's click where it says start creating start creating and then click where it says Python 3 okay and it'll load and here at the top we have our new we have files and if you log in which I'm logged in right now I can actually save my files give it another name does this look familiar to scratch a little bit yes it does And if we click here on the left side we can see that we have scratch type blocks kind of show up with loops and all kinds of stuff okay and here's our scratch blocks here on the left okay all right so give it a name you can uh, scroll down now I will tell you this interesting part is making out the handout here on my normal computer screen it actually shows three dots the three dots here and it has something to do with my monitor resolution so sometimes you get a full menu like this and then sometimes you'll see the three dots depending on what your screen resolution is so just kind of realize don't don't let that stump you all right all right, so let's do our hello world project. Okay, the classic hello world, and I will disappear so I'm not blocking any of our code. All 
All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right in here. So this is our goal. We're going to do a Hello World in Scratch, and then we're going to do a Hello World using our edgy blocks. Now you can, of course, um, do our coding. Uh, follow along if you don't want to use this if you want to use the normal coding but do realize we're going to see the coding on the edgy blocks as well okay the Python code not coding all right so let's go ahead now I've got the actual answer there but let's see if we can go through our list here so the first thing is let's go ahead and let's add a hello say hello code block now a lot of times in scratch we do that to the two second one let's do it just like this so we kind of mirror what we can do with Scratch, I mean, excuse me, with um, Python. So let's go ahead and let's go to Looks. Now, one thing I do like about uh, Scratch is that I don't have to remember exactly which category is in a which. I try to because it's quicker, but you can just scroll down if you're not sure where something is and you're like, well, I'm not sure where it is. And you can just scroll the whole way down with the edgy blocks you can't just that category but you can just kind of click through pretty quickly okay okay so let's go ahead and let's make uh, let's go back to what we we're doing <laughs> we're going to add the say hello so let's go to looks and let's choose the one that says say hello all right now with scratch there's two things I can actually click here at any time and it'll run the code and then I hit the stop sign to stop the code and in a second we're going to add a flag so that our code starts when the flag starts and Python doesn't work that way let's go ahead and let's click in the box and let's add the word on uh, the word world the word world if it turns blue you can click again and you'll get your blinking cursor hit space and world so hello world and then when we click the code hello world hit the stop sign to stop the code all right, now we're actually going to add a flag to the top because this is one of the big things that uh, Scratch does. And this will allow us to hit the flag similar to when we hit the edgy blocks run button. Okay. So control when clicked. Now, when we click the green flag, of course, we can still click here too because that's how the, you can just run code at any time hit the flag up here hello world there you go and then hit stop when you're done that easy right okay so let's go ahead and here's our little bit of a code the hello world now let's do it in Python okay so all we gotta do believe it or not there already is a edge on edgy blocks there already is a block called hello world alright so let's kinda get used to our blocks So if I kind of scroll through here or I click through here, statements is what we're looking for. And then we actually can see it where it says print. And we want the one with the quotes where it says print hello world. Okay. So go ahead and just drag it out here. And because it already says hello world, we don't need to change anything. And we can instead of it saying say, the code is print. Now, how do we actually see what our code is? Well, if we click blocks, that's this button right here. It'll actually show us what the real Python code is. Okay. So the print is print, open parentheses, quote mark. Now, does it need to be a single quote or a double quote? It doesn't matter on most things. Okay. Hello world, quote, close parentheses. All right. Now let's run our code. So let's go up here and let's hit run. If you have the three lines instead, that's going to bring the menu up. You just have to click that. So hit run. It's going to open it up into the trinket and it runs it in the next window. There we are. Hello world success. Okay. 
So let's hit the exit button to go back. Now, how can I see my code and my blocks at the same time? If I go up here to extras, click extras, and then go here to where it says split view, it'll actually show my code here and here as well. Now, I've actually had an issue you go well I can just click over here type code and then when I go back over here it'll actually uh, change the blocks it actually does not okay so do realize that the blocks whatever's in the blocks um, takes over everything else but if you do do change the code here if you just want to play around with it I can change the code here, hit run, and it'll run that code, okay? But when I go back to my blocks, the blocks will actually change. Hang on. All right. When you go back to your blocks, it, your code here will not change your blocks here, okay? So just kind of realize that. Now, of course, I could click here. I can click here and then just change it to everyone and it'll change the code back to whoop I do have to spell it right it'll change the code as well okay and then of course when I hit run it'll appear that way okay now Someone says, that's great. Now, how can I do this in just kind of the normal coding Python? Well, very easy. You can just kind of copy it over. Okay, come on. Okay. So what I can do is I can actually go up here, I can actually select it, do my right click copy, and then if I did want to use kind of my normal Python, someone might say, I can paste, this, this is a one line of code, I could paste it here, but I'm going to do the the editor. So if I have it here and then I'll hit run and it's going to say you need to save it. I'm just going to call it hello everyone. Okay. Hit save and then it'll run my code and I'll see it here over on the left side. Okay. The PY was because it wasn't uh, spaced out enough, okay? So I didn't actually run that, that code. Okay, so hopefully that gave a little bit of an explanation of how that part works. All right, now let's go ahead go ahead to our next part here let's do our row 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 your boat song
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a forever loop after we do our main code here. Our main code will be row, 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 row your boat. So there's our code in Scratch. So let's go ahead and go to Scratch. Now one of the things is uh, because Scratch kind of puts out one thing at a time, if I did not tell it to do a row row and then add it to it so it's three words, it actually looks like he said the same word three times. Okay. The big thing is also to make sure that we put a weight in here, which will be similar to what we're, we'll do with the other in a minute. So let's go ahead and let's look at that. So I'm going to go up to File and hit New. So we have a nice clean work area. And the first thing we want to do is we want to add the, the flag when clicked. Now, let's add say. We'll make it say row. And change it to row. And then let's actually add a wait one second to it. This is going to be like in Python, it's going to say sleep. Now, so we're going to add row, row, wait a second, row, 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 okay? So if I already click the green flag, row, row row so by doing the extra word in there it makes it look like he's saying you know more than one word if you don't it makes it look like he's just like uh, row for a really long time All right, so let's hit the green flag. Row, row, row. And I hit stop, and it'll stop my code. And I need to have the one second. And then let's add where it's uh, row, row. <laughs> row, row. So we're going to add the your boat. And then we're going to add one extra place because in a minute we're going to make it loop. And when it goes back down to the start, we want it to have a second in between the first row. Okay. So let's add a hello and we're going to change it to your 
vote. Okay, and then we're going to add one second here to the end. All right, so let's do our whole code. Row, 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 your boat. <laughs> All right, now I'm a big believer in doing your code and then making changes to your code and then run it again. Okay, so do realize that if we're in a class, I would definitely encourage you to do that and, of course, give you a little bit of time to do that. So I'd say something to the effect of, you know, do it the same way I'm doing it to begin with, but then go in, make a change, and then, then you'll better understand how to do the coding part of it, all right? So if you came in here, so I'd recommend you make it say something else, the cat say something else, um, you know, not anything bad. That's what I tell the, the students or the, the kids that come to. Uh, so let's go ahead to our edgy blocks and let's do new okay and let's scroll down and now we're going to actually do our code for Python and we should see some similarities okay one big thing that's an important is that uh, with the Py with excuse me with the scratch everything's already included you don't have to import anything from any place else but with Python you might and later we'll talk about uh, adding new libraries to your Python as well okay and I just have a quick overview and kind of explaining that but how do we make sure that it, it knows which code to use well we need to import a time so import time how is time work time is com connected to sleep okay so we're gonna add the import time so let's go up here to our edgy blocks hit click import go here say import time drag that over we're already starting out on the right foot I'm going to do extra split view so you can see my code here too import time now we want to do print well what exactly is print remember we did the hello world well we used print to do the hello world this time we're using print to do our row part so statement let's go to print and let's change that to row now one of the things is we don't have to do row you know double row and then double row is be triple row is because it's actually going to you know put it on the screen scrolling down on the next line instead of it being in the same place so let's add a time sleep right now it's set for one second if you do want it to do any time shorter you can do 0.5 which I actually played around with that to begin with for this exercise but it seemed like that was too short of a time okay so okay so let's keep going here so print row time row time and then print your boat and we need to add one more time for sleep okay so we want to add a print we'll change that to a row you know and some folks would say oh you shouldn't do this you should start with this but you have to realize that the you're not you're not used to the code yet if you're new to Python okay so seeing the code using our blocks here and even using the blocks even copying the thing over I've done a few projects where I did that uh, just because it was so much easier to drag the blocks here and I know that that's right I'm not having to debug as much on a little project and there you go import time print row one second one second so we need to add our sleep time we're gonna add our row so here's my third row and then we want to add sleep time and then we want to add a row uh, excuse me your boat okay when we look at our code we imported the time the print it needs to have the row in quotes here's our time sleep for one print row and double quotes 
time sleep, print, row. There you go. Double quote. Okay. Open parentheses, quote, your boat, quote, close parentheses. All right. So let's hit run. Row, 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 your boat. <laughs> and then we hit the. Now, if we did want it to do it again, we hit run again. Row, 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 your boat. Now remember, you can again change this, just change this number here. It'll change the seconds. Half a second is 0.5. A quarter of a second is 0.2. Uh, so, and of course, change the words. And again, I encourage you to make those changes so that you'll kind of understand the code a little more. All right, now let's go ahead and we're actually going to talk about uh, our forever loop, which is very important anytime we're trying to do any major code. In the, the Raspberry Pi physical computing class, which some of those videos should still be up, uh, because it, we're not in class, I can't do a full hands-on, but we kind of do an introduction and walk through our handout that we use. So you, friend or family member, can use that for, for um, home uh, projects, okay? So let's talk about a forever loop. We actually set up the forever loop with our Python code when we were doing our LED lights and making them bleak, blink with our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do our forever loop. Let's go back to scratch. Let's go to control and we'll see one called forever. Okay, you'll see there's also, we don't get into it on scratch uh, today, but you'll see if in, if else, all that kind of stuff that's very similar to Python. All right, so let me drag the forever loop over here. And if I get it right below the green flag click, you'll see it selects the whole area. Let me, let me zoom in here, make this a little bigger. All right, is that a little better? Yes, okay. So here's our forever, whoop, a little too much. Here's our forever, we drag it. I'm gonna get it right here. If not, you always just can start over. Now we have a nice forever loop on there. So when we click the flag, he's gonna say row, 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 your boat, and then starts over again. Now, the reason uh, we have a nice pause in between there is because we have the pause on the end. So when he does your boat, second pause, and then goes back up to row, okay? So that's how we use our forever loop for animation and scratch and of course for more coding in Python too. All right, so let's go to edgy blocks and then let's click on our loop. Now, oh, let me do the handout. So in uh, Python, our loop is called while true, okay? While true. An important part of this is when we actually add the while true loop, okay? Make sure this is capital T. This is a lowercase w. Um, if you're hand coding anything, do you realize that Python is very particular about what's uppercase and what's lowercase. Need to make sure while true is then indented. Okay, if you're typing this by hand in the, the main area like this, once we start doing while and then I type true, and I hit enter, you'll see immediately it gives me a nice indention, okay? So if you're doing this by hand, make sure that it isn't denting. If you're adding this to previous code, you need to go back and indent that code, okay? Whoop. All right, so let's get our loops, the while true loop, and drag it over here. Now we want it to basically be in the same place. So if we, we have to uh, negotiate here, <laughs> negotiate, you will go in there. All right, the back man will eat you. Chomp, 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 chomp. And I can even make this a little bigger too on screen. I know some of you may be looking at this on a, like a tablet or something. So I will try to remember to Come on. Now, if you can't get it, I will tell you that the, uh, 
The Python thing works really well a good bit of the time. I like that you can see our, our uh, code over there changes. So I'll drag it here and then if I hand drag, there we go, boom. So you may have to pull the snippets apart, okay? And blocks and then put them together. All right, now when we look at our code over here, we can see it says while true with the capital T and it's indented it, didn't it? All right, so now when we do run, row, 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 your boat, <laughs> row, 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 uh-oh, we have a problem, don't we? Uh, it doesn't have a break, and I need to add that in there. So I need to add a second at the end, and now hit run. Now it should work right, row, 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 your boat, row, 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 your boat, all the way to infinity. Okay, so that's what a loop, forever loop, while true loop can actually ha uh, make our code work over and over. So if you're doing any kind of projects, anything like a game or something, and instead of you having to keep hitting run, maybe it's asking you a question, maybe go in there and then actually just set it as a forever loop. Okay, all right, now I'm going to go and show saving this project. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to call this the row row boat I call it row boat one and I go up to file and hit save okay saves my project edgy blocks go up here and call it row boat one and go up to save and it'll save it for me now let's go ahead and let's do file new edgy blocks let's hit new I've had it where the, the code is here, but if I do a new, I need to exit the split view, okay? So exit split view, hit new, it'll be new, go to extras, click split view, and then there's our split view again, okay? All right, so let's go to our next one. All right, let's do our project, your name, okay? So now we're going to learn about variables, okay? We're going to do a quick little thing, kind of explaining how to make a variable, what variables are, okay? And then um, we'll, we'll make them add uh, some numbers together, okay? So variables are changeable values recorded in the scratch memory, of course, Python as well. And it can only hold a value at a time with that name, okay? So that's why we'll actually add more than one, okay? Values can either be numbers or letters or any kind of text, okay? So kind of think about that. It's either words or numbers. So we're gonna, whoop, we're gonna actually make this is what our kind of goal is, just to kind of understand what variables are. So in Scratch, we're gonna say we're going to make a variable. We're going to call it A. You can call it whatever you want. We're going to call it A. And then we're going to make, we're going to say set A to the number 2. Okay. So the value of A will be 2. And then B, the value of B variable will be 3. Okay. Uh, then we need to do uh, choose for all sprites. And we got to name it, give it the letter A. And then we got to, we don't want it on our screen with scratch. So we're going to, uncheck the the box okay so let's do that together so let's go ahead and let's go down here to where it says variables there's a lot of folks that use scratch every day lots of animations and they may never even use variables but this is a great things to, to do so let's click make a variable and I'm under variables make a variable it's gonna say for all sprites by the default or its main setting so I'm gonna say a hit OK and now we have a variable. Let's click make a variable again and let's do B and hit OK. Okay. So how do we set what A and B are? Now first thing is A and B already show up here. This is so that you can do scores and stuff. So if you look at the the video of course when we do our class again uh, Scratch let's make a game you'll actually see that uh, you can actually have the score 
up here a countdown timer or something we don't want these things actually on the screen here so we're going to do the uncheck box okay so they won't be there now this is actually a variable that's built in my variable uh, you, so you don't have to create your own and it makes it kind of easy because it's, it's accessible immediately okay okay good right Ra Rachel welcome welcome <laughs> welcome everybody how about that <laughs> okay so here we are we got our variables here so now let's go to control oh, excuse me I need to stay here so we're going to do set a so we just drag set a to what set a and our handout we made it number two okay so let's set a to two and then we drag the one that set a and we have a little drop down and we say B set it to three okay now we actually want to do we want to the cat to say something or, or say something on the screen don't we so we're going to do say we're going to get this uh, variable now, excuse me the, the um, I'll come up with it in a second the plus sign on there how about that so let's go to looks let's do say drag that on there and then the operator thank you so we have the operator and then the operator here at the top is the plus sign so let's drag that and we have to get right on the thing there and it'll do that and now we want it to say we want it to say what we wanted to add these two things together so let's go back to variables and we have our own little bubbles so we can put the a in there and then the b in there okay and then all I got to do is click the code and he'll say five so now you could of course add the click the flag on top if you want to so when you click the flag he'll say and you click the stop sign it'll go away click the flag he says the number stop sign it goes away okay now let's see if we can do that in Python okay so it's gonna be very similar but remember instead of it's doing say we want it to do print okay and then we'll get in get down here and uh, deal with doing our, our, our game here where it's asking what our name is and stuff all right so let's go to edu edu blocks let's go to variables we're gonna make our two variables again I know this project may seem a little simple but trust me after you do this you really kind of grasp the concept of what variables are pretty quickly so create we're going to do a and then create and then we'll call it B so then we have our a and B so we've got to tell it what we want the a and the B to be equal to don't we so we're going to drag this over here We'll do it to do alphabetical order. So A is equal to two. I do variables and drag it here. And B is equal to three. Okay. Pretty simple. There's our variable. It says what its name is. It says what it's equal to. Okay. Now we want to make it print or say on our screen. So now let's get our statement and we actually want it to do because this is a variable and it doesn't it should not have quotes around it because that can mess up our code we want to choose the print that doesn't have the quote marks on it okay and in this code it actually says variable so there's actually two prints there's one called print hello world for text and there's print for variable and that's what we want so we want to do that one and then we're going to get I have to look for it where is it on here Okay, so if you scroll down to statements, it's this one right here. Okay, wait, hang on. Let me make sure that's right. No, that's not the one we want. Okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, where is it? Not that one. Okay, it's the math one which you want. That makes sense now, doesn't it? 
Hey Mac, welcome, welcome. So let's click the Mac, the math one, not the Mac one, and it says true plus true. Now if we mess around with this, if we do our drop down, here's our plus, minus, divide, and multiply is actually the star. Okay, I know that's odd, but the multiply is the star um, instead of it being an X. Okay, so I'm going to drag that and put that in there. Now, unlike Scratch, I'm going to zoom in here. Unlike Scratch, when I drag my part, the uh, you know the bubble to put in somewhere, I don't actually do it on the hinge like this. It's where my mouse is is actually what matters, and it'll turn yellow. Let go. And then I'm going to go to variables and then basically drag my little bubbles again and I have to get it right. Now if, you, if, you, if it isn't working, because sometimes it will not work, you see how it's sometimes working, sometimes not. You just kind of, if you need to pull it out, you can and then do it this way and then put it back. That's perfectly fine. But that's our goal right here. So that's basically creating a variable and hopefully now after this exercise you understand that very easily let's go ahead and let's do run and it pops up and says five okay so of course we could go up here and make changes to our variable now why do this because we can write other code that'll say stuff like uh, you know countdown timer start with start our variable at number 10 uh, countdown every two seconds every every second countdown one number okay and then what do you have oh you have a timer okay so and then you say stuff like when variable a equals zero say on the screen game over and then there's your game is done okay all right so that's just a little introduction to variables and let's go ahead and let's do our our project here and we'll do our dog project okay <laughs> the dog uh, the dog ears project okay so let's go ahead and do new on both our projects I'm sorry I keep minimizing the wrong thing so I'm gonna hit file new I'm not going to save that project on the edgy blocks I'm hit new but then it clears it here and then it's not clear over here but if I close the split it will be clear it's a little bit aggravating but I do want y'all to see the code hanging out there too, okay? All right, so let's go through our process here. First in Scratch, we want to add our flag. So we're in clicked. And then we want to add ask what's your name and wait. Ask what's your name and wait. Now that is actually under sensing. You're thinking, oh, it's talk. It's like talking. Maybe it'll be like the looks where it's thinking and saying and everything. No, it's actually under sensing. Now, with this, you can actually set your question to whatever you want. It already has a pre-made variable that it's going to hang out for us. Okay, so this is what we're going to put in when we're when the cat says something later. All right, so I'm going to drag the ask, your name, and wait. Like I said, we're going to use this later. Again, to point out this is a variable, if I do do the checkbox, it gets a little box. Okay. So let's go back. Now let's add, uh, say hello. <laughs> add, say hello. And then this is, this is going to be interesting. Our goal is it's going to ask me what is your name and wait and then the cat will say I, I put my name in let me, let me show you that real quick so if I run the code right without that we get this thing the cat pops up says what's your name and I type in my name and then I hit enter or I can click the checkbox and then nothing happens right the code stopped <laughs> Now, if I drag this up here, again, nothing's going to happen. And then he'll say hello. Okay. So we need to make it do something. Now, 
to point out how the answer variable works if I drag the bubble into the hello because these two things are connected if I run the code it'll say what's your name I say hello and then when I hit enter the cat will just say my name okay well we want it to be more than that don't we we want it to actually tell me something nice so we need to actually add two join operators okay two join operators and the goal is we're going to put one in another and we want that will not say join on the screen and we want to say hello and then we want to say the answer and then we want it to say nice to meet you all right so let's go to our operators operator let's see so we have our join yeah we have to get that out of there we have our join and then we're going to do another one and it actually doesn't matter which side I'm gonna do it where the bananas are and we need to change this to hello now uh, with our test you'll find out I think we have to add a space after hello but we'll, we'll do this normal then we'll change that and then I add answer and then nice to meet you period all right you ready here we go so I hit the green flag it's gonna say what is your name I say Alex And then I hit enter and it'll say hello uh oh I need to add a space in there don't I okay so I'm gonna add a space here and I need to add a space in front of nice as well so I'm gonna try my flag again what is your name I'm gonna say Alex and then I say and it says hello Alex nice to meet you <laughs> okay so there's our first real interaction uh, going back and forth now again I encourage you like in class I'd say well make it say something else make it ask a different question make it say something you say something else back don't say anything bad uh, make it say something back and then you'll fully understand what the code does now let's see if we can do this with our edgy blocks and, and vice versa in uh, Python so here's our full Python code here and this is what we're going to be doing okay so we need to create a variable and we need to call it name so let's go to variables create variable why is that so big is it because I did this huh it's interesting I don't know so create and we'll call it name All right, boom, there's a variable right there. So we need to say name equals, so let's go ahead and drag this out here and I'll blow it up a little bit. All right, so we want the name to equal what? We want the name to equal the input, okay? What is your name? So they both have similar statements here so here's input what is your name now that that I drag it here and then boom we have name variable equals the input input means it's going to ask me you know like a text box now remember you can make this question anything you want so let's go ahead and we can run it so we can try it out so I'm do run it pops says what is your name I'll say Alex Hit enter and it does nothing because that's all the code is right now okay so let's change that so our variable name equals whatever I type in here so again that's how our variables work now let's do print just like the say on the screen let's see statements and this is a variable so we want the very the set one that says print variable we don't want quote double quote marks because this is going to add quote marks for us okay and then the code won't work if we do that so we need the one that says print variable okay 
Now again, what can we do if we wanted to? We can just drag the one that says name and put it right there. Print on the screen the word name, okay? If we did that, it'll say, what is your name? Alex, hit enter, it's gonna say Alex. But we want it to do a sentence for us, don't we? All right, so we wanna go in here and we wanna add basically these ones that have the plus sign, which are similar to joiner. And I do need to put a space after hello and a space before nice um, as well, okay? So let's go to, where is it? All right, so this one right here, this is not, I know this looks like a plus sign, this is confusing, but it's really not a plus sign. Our plus sign was here with the math, okay? So if we do our drop down menu, you can see this is just an addition sign. It's, I know that's confusing too, but, or a, a comma, which just breaks things up. If we do this one, that's our actual math, okay? So we don't need that. We want this one and we want to drag it in there and we want another one of those. And we add it on the end here. And like I said, if you have trouble, you can pull it out. So if we look at our code, it says something uh, plus something plus something with quotes. So I want the name to be in the middle. And if you have problems, kind of play around with it, move it around. And I'm gonna say the same thing. Hello, and I need to add a space at the end. Meet you, period. All right, now, can we look at our code over here? There we go, name equals input, what is your name? So whatever this is, where I put the word name is where the word's gonna show up, okay? So let's do run. What is your name? Alex, hit enter. Hello, Alex. Whoop, I guess I didn't put the space in there. Hello, Alex, nice to meet you. So let's add the space. I did add the space. Huh. All right, let me try again. There we are. I guess I did it improper. Uh, hello, Alex, nice to meet you, okay? Now, can you make this into a talking robot? Oh, absolutely you could. You come up with a whole bunch of different statements after this, do a different input, uh, set, add a different variable, and then you could actually have it have a conversation. You know, maybe a silly conversation, <laughs> but you definitely could, okay? Uh, maybe type in what is your name and then you know the person says I don't know or something like that a robot because it's, it's like a software program okay so hopefully you enjoyed that and understood a lot more about what variables are okay now let's go ahead any questions about that project okay hopefully you're getting a little bit more comfortable with the edgy blocks Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about dog years, okay? And we're going to get a little bit more into, this is going to be strictly just a uh, edgy blocks uh, project. And of course, the challenge is if you wanted to do this, uh, challenge to, to take this code and then do it in Scratch, okay? And then we're going to do a Scratch and try to do it uh, vice versa, okay? So, whoop, I don't want to show too much. So basically we have the, hold on, where's the, yeah. We actually have a project here and we actually have it written out in uh, Python already, okay? Now, we're gonna be dealing with something new here. We're gonna be talking about strings and we're gonna be talking about integers, okay? The biggest thing to know is that basically we're identifying something uh, to tell the computer to do something with it, okay? So what we have here is we have uh, strings, or S-T-R, can be the letter A, can be words, or it can, of course, can be characters as well. 
integers to make the math work you have to have it uh, listed as an integer and that's where number meaning math shows up okay so in scratch we're kind of used to doing um, we pretty much do the math it knows what the the math is but in Python we have to specifically label things if it's going to be math and then maybe even turn it back to something that we can see on screen okay now the code below here has a little has a um, doll, uh, hashtag on it the hashtag means that it's set for comments okay set for comments so that means this is in the code but if you do need to add like little comments for yourself do you realize you can do that just by adding a little hashtag in front of it and it won't run the code it just tells basically tells the computer to ignore that Okay, now with this, we're actually going to be doing four uh, uh, variables, okay? And we're also going to be labeling uh, some of our answers as integers and some of our answers as uh, strings. So we're going to label something as strings, and then we're going to turn it back. We're going to turn it into an integer, and then we're going to bring it back, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and basically this practice is I have the code. How can I learn from the code? How can I change it into uh, edgy blocks? You know, so if I do want to do extra stuff online, there you go right there. Okay, so here's our first thing. We want to make a, uh, we want to make, um, we got to make four. No, okay, hold on. I'll do the copy paste on this. We actually want to make four variables. So let's go ahead and I have to exit this and hit new. And then if I want to see the code, I have to click there and hit split view. So first variable I want to make. So variable create. I want to do dog uh, age, okay? Underscore age. The other one that I want to make is dog age with a capital A, okay? So variable dog age with a capital A. That's just so for my information so I can kind of keep track a little bit. Of course, you can name these anything you want. All right, and then we have dog years. Make a variable dog years and then we have dog year okay I like this project I probably need to work on the names because it's a little confusing even to me all right so let's start off here and we're basically going to just be moving the the part here that says variable that equals this variable equals that okay and then we'll actually have this so our first one here is we need dog age so grab this drag it over here and make sure it says dog age so here's our dog age so the variable it's called dog age equals what well we want it to do the input okay so we're going to do input it's under statements input and right now it says what is your name and I'm going to drag it so we have dragon excuse me dragon dog age uh, input what is your name and we need to change that to how old is the dog because it's going to do dog years for us. How old is the dog? Now, of course, you have to remember to do dog years. You're supposed to multiply it by seven. That's just kind of our exercise here. So dog age input. So if you hit run, it's going to ask me the question. Okay. Now, we're going to have to actually convert what our answer is okay to an integer so that our math will work okay is that a little aggravated yes it is 
<laughs> Mac, you like that? I like that too. One thing I miss uh, is, can I do that? Let's see. How do I do a thumbs up? Oh, I'll do a smiley face too. There we go. Smiley face. Okay. So, uh, next we want to do is we have to convert it to an integer. Okay. So, now we're going to do the dog age. So, do variable, drag this on over there. This time we're doing the one, I believe that's the capital dog age. So dog age equals, and it's going to have to be, have to make it into an integer. Okay. Now how do I do that? Well, there's little statements here. There's integer and then there's string. I, I and T meaning math, STR meaning words. Okay. So let's go ahead and drag integer out there. All right, now what do we want the integer to do? Well, let's tell it what we want it to do. We want the integer to be turned to dog age, okay, with the lowercase a. So to variable, lowercase a, and we might have to negotiate it. Come on, come on, okay, I'll drag it out here and then do it, there we go, and then put it back, okay. So now the capital A equals integer dog age. Now let's go to our next one. Let's calculate the dog's age and dog years. So we, our answer for dog years will be our ultimate one, okay, because that's what we want it to say down here is dog year, okay. So dog years equal, whoop, hang on, got to drag this, A dog years, I'm going to highlight the one I'm working on, that'll make more sense. Dog years equals dog age times, remember our times is our star times seven, okay? So dog years, we want to do math, and here's our math. We want to do times, which is our star. We want to do seven. And what else do we want it to do? We want it to be a dog age with a capital A. So let me go to our dog age with a capital A. And if that, there you go. So now we look at our code dog years equals dog age with a capital A times seven. So we'll have an answer, but we need to come back so that we can see it on the screen, okay? So turns the result back into a str string that we can see on the screen. So dog year equals string dog years and then dog year is what we're going to put in our sentence down here. All right, so let's go back to the variables and we're going to do, wait, hang on. Yeah, equal the, I was checking that. Okay, and it's the dog year one, yeah. So dog year, we need to do statement we want to turn it back into a string and that is the dog years and I may have to do that separate there we go and now we're gonna have our answer to print on the screen so there's our full code there 
I want to print, uh, print on the screen. Now I can do print dog year, so let's do that first. So I do my statement, print, this is a variable, and then our what we're going to add, we'll add the quotes, okay? And if we drag, yeah, dog year. All right, so let's run our code and see what happens. So run. How old is the dog? I'm going to say the dog is seven. Ah, and it just gives me the answer, okay? So I actually want it to say a whole statement. So just like the question when it asked our name, that's what we want it to do, okay? So let's take this away. And let's go back to our, our what we want to do. We want it to say just like before, so we're going to have to embed two of those, but this time we're going to do, break it up with our little quote, our little commas, okay? All right, so we need one of these, and then we need one more, and we can put on the second one. There you go. So we got our plus, plus, plus thing again. We want dog ear in the middle. And if that is being aggravating, then take it apart and then put it back. Come on, the middle one. There you go. There you go. So we have dog ear, because the dog ear is our answer. And we want it to say, I'm trying to remember what we actually want to say. The dog is we'll have to find out if we need to put a space in there or not. Years old, okay. All right, so let's run our code. So run. I'm going to say seven. The dog is 49 years old. Okay, so we do need to put uh, spaces in there. We need to click there, add a space, and click there and add a space. And then we do run. How old is the dog? Seven. The dog is 49 years old. So if I do run, how old is the dog? Uh, he's four. Dog is 28 years old. Okay. <laughs> Did you like that? So that's basically how we can make it do math, ask questions, uh, set it up that way. So we've actually done two projects here. One where we can ask questions, make the input whatever we want it to be, and then we can actually post that as words in our, our um, sentences there. Uh, there actually is one that they have online that's like a Mad Libs game where it gives you a funny sentences and you basically go in there and you, it'll ask you, well, what words do you want to ask? You know, what? Give me a, a word that's a noun. Give me a word that's a verb. Give me a word that's an adjective. It actually does like a Mad Lib uh, kind of game. But I like the dog year thing because it kind of gets our concepts uh, across pretty quickly. Okay, so any questions about that project? Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and let's scroll down. Okay, now we're going to do pick a random number game, okay? So we're going to talk about um, random or randent, okay? Oh, we won't show that part. Okay, so let's do this, our project in Scratch first, okay? And I even have a way that you can set it up and make this into a game. So let's go ahead and Scratch. And let's go ahead and let's make everything new. So do new. Or if you want to save your project, but I'm going to do new right now. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do click. 
our flag. And then we're going to do set my variable. Now, you could actually make it your own if you want to give it a new name. But let's just use my variable for right now. That's the pre-made variable that Scratch already has made for us. So we don't have to, we're only going to use one thing. So you can just use this if you want to. Of course, if you need more than one variable or even the map that we used earlier, you can make your own. Okay. So we want to set my variable to is what we want. And that's it right here. Set my variable to. So I'm going to drag that out there. Now, we want to make it pick a random number. So let's go ahead and let's go to operators. And it actually has a pick a random number already ready for us. And then drag it in there. So my variable, pick a random number. On a little side note, of course, you can do the checkbox here. And it'll actually show up on the screen. But we want this cat to talk to us. If I did this, it'll be like that. Do you see that on the number on the screen? Every time I click, it runs the code, picks a random number. But I want the cat to tell us that. Okay. So let's go to looks and let's do say. What we want him to say, we want him to say the variable. Okay. So say, and then go to variables, and my variable. And remember, we could call it anything we wanted to. We could make our own, call it random number. It doesn't matter. OK, now let's run our code. It's number four. OK, and you ready? All right, let's see. I'm going to go with the number seven, lucky number seven. Eight. It was close. Okay, ready? I'm going to do it again. Uh, okay, so guess a number. Guess a number between 1 and 10. I will go with, I will go with 3. Oh! <laughs> I did not cheat on that, I promise. And I will stop there. Did you guess 3? Okay, so we're already having fun because it's, it's, um, you know, it's a game. There you go. So let's talk about what we're going to do now. We're actually going to make it, and that did have the two second thing. I decided not to do that because I just wanted it to be just like this. And in fact, I may go ahead and change that so it equals. Yeah, y'all will get to see me. <laughs> actually change something immediately. How about that? Because I want it to be a little bit more close to the there you go how about that yes things are changing right now okay so let's go ahead and let's look at what we're going to do so there's two ways of doing this now the normal way to do it is basically having it like this but you'll actually see the the edgy blocks actually does it a little bit differently because when we import it also is going to include the random here and randint. So it's actually going to write the code a little bit differently than the way most people would write the code. So we actually need to import something from the library. Uh, earlier we imported time. Now we're going to import random. Okay. Uh, randint is the one that tells it to guess between the one and the 10. Okay. So first we need to start off by adding uh, random. We need to import random. So import random, okay. Now I know that this code here is going to change that. Most of the time folks already write from random import randint, okay. But it's actually going to do our code a little bit differently, the edgy blocks, okay. So we're going to we're going to keep it this way uh, in case you run into any code that is different. Now what we want to do is we have our variable because anything that's this equals something is a variable. So what was the name of our variable? 
Well, the name of variable is number. So let's do, add, we gotta make a new variable. Call it number. Okay, hit okay. We get this, we're gonna drag it out here. So number equals what? Well, number is gonna equal the random number, okay? So let's go down to where it says random. See this? Random, randent is what we really want. Let's drag that in there. And we want it to do, I wish it had this pre-made, but it, we do one comma 10, okay? And then that's it. That means it's gonna guess a number between one and 10. All right, now let's add print. And we're gonna add print and number, okay? Statement. Now this is a variable, so we don't want the one that has the quotes on it. We want the print that says variable on it. And what is our variable? Our variable is number. So we need to go variables and drag the number and put it in there, okay? Whoop. That's going crazy all of a sudden, sorry. So let's look at our code. So our code is now import random number equals what? Number equals random one through 10 with the randent, okay? And then we have print and put our number that equals, it's gonna pick it. So print equals what? It's gonna equal number because number equals randent, okay? Now let's go ahead and run our code. Oh, it's eight, okay. All right, get ready. Number between one and 10, you got it in your head, you got it in your head, you ready, ready, ready? I think I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna be weird, I'm gonna choose five, okay? Here we go. Oh my God, <laughs> I am on fire today, okay. Usually it takes me about four to five, maybe even seven numbers to get the same number, okay? So I'm, I, I've won, I'm winning, just to let you know I'm winning. If you want to run it again, click here. All right, so guess the number between 1 and 10. Uh, I'm not going to guess because I don't want to mess up my winning streak. But go ahead and guess. 1, 2, 3. Oh, it was 1. I would not have guessed 1, so I knew I was going to lose. Okay, so we've got it doing random numbers. Now, one neat project that's on here, and this is my challenge, is for you to basically make this in uh, the Python. So the big thing is this makes actually makes a random guessing game. So let's look at our code, all right? Let's look at our code. So it pops up, we have ask our questions. So the ask, you know, and it says, what is your name? We changed it to what is your guess? Okay, and wait. The variable guess has been created. The They're using the same uh, variable. It's my variable, okay? So no, you could do another variable if you wanted to, but these are our two variables, our guess and my variable. Set guess to the answer, okay? So guess variable and the answer to this question, okay, are the same. My variable equals pick a random number, okay? So say my variable for two seconds. So basically you hit the flag, it picks a random number, which is my variable, and then my variable is displayed for two seconds. It's important to do that with this game because uh, um, it moves on to the next part. Now if in Python, um, because it's just text on the screen, it just moved down, it moves down to the next line. So you don't really have to tell it uh, to wait two seconds or anything. Now we have our if, okay? the if you drag the if and then it says guess guess the answer to this question guess equals if if guess equals my variable okay then click then say you win for two seconds okay so if guess 
equals that variable, say you win for two seconds. Okay, so that's just kind of the challenge. That's just using the if and the equals to. Okay, so everything we've covered so far, you can do this for. All right, a question, how? Okay, <laughs> very, very good. All right, so the big thing is you actually have it so it comes in and as long as it equals the two, it should be able to equal out properly. I think you might have to do the, the uh, um, okay, as a challenge, yeah, okay. There you go, but definitely make that in Scratch because it's a lot of fun and you can have friends and family play that too and it's, it's pretty good. Okay, so, but yeah, so the if, I don't think you have to change it to, huh. You might have to because it is our answer. So yeah, I think you may actually have to change that just like we did the dog years because it does have to equal the previous. Huh. I don't know, I don't have to look at that one, but yeah. Okay, so there's a little challenge. There it is. It is a challenge, okay, I like that. Okay, so Let's go ahead to our next part here. We're actually getting close to the end of class. I've only got about 10 minutes or so, but this is one that we're gonna talk about and I'll actually pull the project up. So this is our really big long project. And the only thing that's really different on this one is that it does add some extra parts as the ifs, okay? Now this is rock, paper, scissors. And my challenge for this one is if you wanted to make this more advanced than this, you could turn it into the the the, the Big Bang Theory, uh, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, or some other variation if you wanted to as well, okay? So here's my main code, and this is actually a Raspberry Pi project, and let me pull this up. So this is actually a uh, from Raspberry Pi uh, uh, .org website, and it does have the trinket hanging out here. I don't want to miss over talking about uh, the different resources I have for y'all too. So it basically pops up like this. Now remember, uh, Python in this way it doesn't use any graphics, uh, so it actually does like little characters and stuff. So it pops up and says choose rock paper and scissors, I'll choose rock by doing R, hit enter. And it does a little graphic, which it looks like a circle, but it's supposed to be a rock, versus, and the flat one is paper, okay? So it says I win, to do again, you hit run. So I'll choose paper this time. Okay, so paper versus rock, I win again. Okay, so run, and I'll do scissors and you'll get to see the little graphic for scissors. So here's our little scissors graphic, okay? Oh, it was a draw, the last one was a draw. So I won two and a draw, okay? Now, one of the things about this is, it kind of, you click next, and it kind of jumps in, it encourages you to use this, so you're using the, the trinket one, but it doesn't really tell you the full code unless you, oh, this is another project that, um, it actually has a printer friendly version of it uh, and it actually has some extra stuff on the printer version what the printer version has it is actually has an address to the full code okay so it kind of hand or spoon feeds you the code going here and then it actually goes in of course to random choose a random and then it kind of goes into the ifs okay And the is if it ugh, else if so it has our if it has our else ifs on there as well and it kind of goes that way and again this is one of those projects I kind of recommend you do and then go back and then change the code and then you'll learn the code a little bit better better uh, maybe even change the characters if you wanted to comes in here so we have to have this whole setup to figure out who wins. So if player said R and the computer said S, then the player wins. 
if the player said R and the computer said P, meaning paper or rock versus paper, the computer wins. So you have to have each of those scenarios, which makes this little bit code a little bit longer, have to have each one of those scenarios uh, set up. So let me show you. Let me show you. So this is the full trinket project here. So this is a full trinket project and it goes like this. Now trying to do this in, let me see, where is it? Do you see this where it says space end on here? That's just so that it'll be on the same line. Okay, so if you, I do not, I have not seen that actually in, the, the uh, blocks. So in my handout, I actually remove that. So when it does its code, so here we are, the if uh, else statement is used Python decision making. The E-L-I-F is short for else if. It allows us to check and do multiple expressions, okay? So here's our main code going in here. We have our player equals, okay, that input. And then we have the player if equals R. Then here's our rock graphic, okay? We have our also our else if, <laughs> else if P, then that's the paper on the screen, okay? Else if S, and then that's our little scissors graphic that it's gonna put on the screen. And the only difference between this that I removed the uh, equals, end equals, is that it'll go down to the next line. So if I do run, oh, it's running. If I do rock, it'll say play a rent, win, oh, let me run it again. So if you don't have the end equals on there, it just makes it go down to the next line, which, believe it or not, I think actually looks a little bit more clean. So it comes up and it says this, so it's rock versus scissors, player wins, okay? Okay, now I don't want to run out of time talking about the, the extra stuff I have and the resources. So basically, this is kind of the, so I had two things here, one to try to redo, I recommend doing this in the scratch, and then trying the challenge and put it into um, uh, Python. And here's our Python code to do this one. And then maybe even go back and try to do this in Scratch, okay? So you'll actually get the full feel of both of it. Why does the code look so long? Well, you just have all these different scenarios. If this happens, then this happens, and this happens, and then this happens. So most of this is actually not our code. Most of this is just basically if this happens, then this happens. So don't be frightened of this in any way, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and any questions about that? Man. Okay, so the handout, of course, is in the, our text there. Feel free to download that. Uh, let's talk about some of our resources, our resources for Scratch. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on there. Uh, this is an excellent resource to go to about wiki. Anything that you're kind of thinking about doing in Scratch, they pretty much have a little tutorial in there for. If you want to go beyond this class, Code Academy, of course, is a great place to start. Kane Academy, and there's also ones called the Code the Hard Way. So let's talk about our Python resources. This is one that I actually found last night. So I'm going to pull a bunch of these up here. And it kind of goes in with the, the variables, data-driven, go away, thank you. Data-driven, and here's it talks more about our if and else if as well. So you don't have to sit here and read all of this. If you do have uh, the big thing, you can go through here, and then it kind of has more of a visual, okay, explaining what everything is and a little bit more of an explanation, okay? 
I really like how this has the code snippets in it. Like I said, I stumbled upon this last night, and I think it had a lot, a lot more detail than some of the other ones that we looked at too. And like I said, uh, we taught this class uh, taught this class yesterday, and teaching it today. So technically, this is the second time. Um, so I'll probably incorporate some more of these other projects and stuff uh, that I'm about to list about as well in like a future class. Uh, this one has interesting, it is simple programs. Now this is from the python.org website. Of course, here's the classic, hello world. You know, what is your name? And it kind of lists a whole bunch of different little, little simple little snippet projects to make changes. Um, there's also, uh, where's the, uh, Anyway, they have a list one on here, which actually looks pretty good. So basically, this is supposed to be, you get here, you see what they are, you can research what it, the explanation is, but you can copy any of these and then they should run. Now, let's talk about libraries a little bit. And one part... Has anybody messed with um, uh, Pi? Not Pi. <laughs> it is Pi. Pi game. Okay, I usually say the Pi all the time. So the, the Python uh, has the different libraries, and here's some recommended ones to install. Of course, we're talking about not edgy blocks, but we're actually talking about the main shell. Uh, if you use this, and of course, there's other ones that you can use as well. And I'm actually going to show you some online ones in a second. But these are other libraries that you can install that a lot of people have, have some good recommendations on here to give you some more skills that you can do. And a lot of these just kind of have a nice walkthrough about what they can be used for. Now, let's talk about our game programming a little bit. I do it wrong. Oh, I'm not doing it there. So basically, our Pi game, uh, Python gaming. Um, this is a library add-on that you can install and uh, download and install into, of course, our main shell. And then you can create little simple, like little games that way. There was uh, they have little tutorials on here as well, and it talks about dealing with graphics. And if you go to the main page, which is I'm just kind of going through my list here. Which is pythongame.org. Uh, They'll list all kinds of different projects people are doing. You can actually play some of these. Not all these are available on through the website. You actually have to download them too. But yeah always something going on and they have some really big tutorials getting started a whole section about it talks about installing it in Windows and then actually getting started with the actual coding okay now this is one I found yesterday This is a little bit more of a tutorial. It kind of goes into the different sections a little bit more. Uh, again, this is one that I think you can kind of jump around depending on what project you're working on. The if, uh, the if statements, uh, dealing with uh, variables or strings, and of course, like even the print function, you can click there and it'll come up and kind of give you a little bit quick explanation of that. So this is kind of like a quick, I won't say a cheat sheet, but kind of a quick uh, jumping back and forth. Now, I won't go into too much, but there is a project here that's on the Raspberry Pi website that basically is it's mostly focused on the Raspberry Pi, the, excuse me, the Minecraft that comes with Raspberry Pi, but it does delve into using it using Python to basically code 
for the Minecraft. I have not tried this myself, so I actually am not sure how far this goes. So, kind of recommend y'all kind of play around with it, you know, and tell me about it, like in a future class or something, and then see how it goes. It does have a way to have Python in one screen, and I don't know exactly um, how far you can go with that. And it kills a little bit of basics of Minecraft, but you can pop it up. And here it is while you're playing the game to affect the game. Okay, so it's trying to kind of get you ready. It's talking about teleporting and using Python to set blocks and everything. So I'm not sure exactly how far you can go, you know, into making changes into that. But it, I think it'd be a fun, you know, way to kind of get get involved and kind of get started. Okay, I get the coding in your mind. Now we did Pi Game. Now these, now I told you that Pi Game actually had to be installed. Okay. Now if you didn't want to do that, there are some online Python editors, and I actually found two of those. Trinket actually has a, a feature you can play around with it, but apparently there's one that if you want a full version of it, it actually does cost like uh, three dollars a month to be able to access the pie game part but I don't know this one I kinda played around with a little bit so of course this is not using the edgy blocks at all uh, but and it actually does have some example games here but this is Python um, with the pie game already installed live in a browser getting to play around with it instead of just having to you know having to have it separate in the shell and if I do examples uh, one of these I played this yesterday I didn't do very well with it but it'll pop up and you can click run and it takes a second to connect and it loads the game here in the little screen I know I keep dying I don't even know the controls on this one. Is it? Ah, okay. Aww. Oh. All right. Oh shoot! I gotta click there. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. So the big thing about this is it is in a browser. Of course, you have to sign up to save you save your um, progress and everything. And they have like a Starfield one on here with the example. But this is some way that you could easily play around with the, the Pi game stuff and, uh, you know, kind of learn a little more. Here's one they have uh, that's kind of like a Starfield, which is kind of interesting. If you kind of click, that's where the star field kind of starts. Okay. All right. And Trinket does have one, but like I said, I was playing around with it and they said something on their website to get like the full version of that. You'd have to, uh, like they have a subscription kind of fee to go around with it. But yeah, but anyway, so it's built in with everything, and uh, it has a cute little game that they have come up. So as you can see, oh, I already messed up. We actually have a few possibilities here with their Python to get a little bit more um, advanced than what we cover in our classes and stuff. All right, so we've kind of come to the end of class, and hopefully. We covered a lot today. We covered what is Scratch. We covered signing up. We covered uh, saving our projects. The projects we worked on was the Hello World, Row Your Boat, <laughs> song one, the Dog Ears, Random Numbers, and we kind of played around with uh, getting started with the Rock, Paper, Scissors project. So let's go ahead and 
let's talk about some of our other stuff that we classes we have upcoming so any questions all right this afternoon we're actually doing a birding class at 2 30 and it'll be here on our youtube channel too and also i'll be posting it to the the columbia county library facebook page uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing uh, library a t double class uh, library resources and apps class at 11 o'clock and then library resources and apps class at 2 30 learn more about free audiobooks free ebooks uh, free legal forms through the library you just need your library card acorn tv galileo library apps and of course learn about uh you know what books to return and uh, stuff like that with the library app here's a schedule for the rest of our classes for the month uh, of course previous videos are located here on our youtube channel and also on our different library facebook pages as well and our libraries are open okay uh, with limited services and hours uh, you can a curbside holds pickup is available you can go to gchrl.org for details call the library with questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and the easiest way to find our YouTube channel which you're watching right now is the GCHRL videos uh, search on YouTube and you can find it pretty quickly okay well we've come to the end of class uh, thank y'all for being here um, I hope you have a wonderful day stay safe and um, of course go outside it's a beautiful day uh, in Georgia and I'll see you guys next time okay <laughs> bye bye Bye.